Hejsan och välkomna till dagens webbinar. Idag ska vi snacka om modellering och dokumentation av trefärdelement i Revit. Och presentationen och allting sånt kommer att hållas av Valensas som är produktexpert. Så egentligen kan jag lämna ord och bild till Valensas direkt för han kommer att köra några snabba bilder på en powerpoint och sedan kommer jag köra en live demo. Så over to Valensas. Okay, so I can start from here now. Uh, yeah. You see the slides and Roger already uh, introduced us. And today we will talk about uh, how to model precast elements in Revit. And um, yeah, in this web webinar, I will show you how to quickly insert connections into your precast project. So I will demonstrate two tools, uh, two solutions, insert elements and smart details. Uh, then I will switch to Holocaust Labs tool, the smart flaws. Uh, so it's a different way how to model precast flaws. And then uh, another good tool to sort elements, to write mark values to, to different elements according to the rules. And uh, the last tool with smart assemblies is how to prepare sharp drawings of your precast elements. Okay, so these are insert elements and smart details. They are used to insert details to your uh, model. I will just quickly run through these slides uh, because you will find them in the handouts. You can download them and, and see descriptions here of the futures and uh, tools descriptions. So I will just run through uh, the tools, the smart flows, the insert details, then uh, sort mark uh, to sort elements and how to prepare uh, sharp drawings like this with uh, smart assemblies tool. Okay, so yeah, now we get to this part, the live demo, and I will switch to my Revit file. And you see this tool for BIMDAC and the insert elements tool selected. So I will uh, demonstrate how does it work. Uh, so first of all, I would like to insert a few foundations here. So I will use this tool. So I select a few columns and I select a command to insert elements by related objects. Okay, now uh, from the uh, from the tr project tree here, I will find any type of my foundations and I will add it here. And I have a rule uh, to insert uh, foundations uh, related to the column base point. Uh, I can set elevation here or and click on insert and all the elements will be inserted uh, under my columns. So I can do this uh, to any amount of, of my elements. Uh, let's say I'll add some more foundations here. So I will select other columns and I will select again uh, insert elements tool, select foundations, uh, let's say different kind of foundation and insert again the same way. So I have some foundations inserted. Now I would like to insert uh, connection details. So for this I will uh, I will select some beams from this model. I will filter structural framing uh, girder ele elements and you will see this being selected and I will again insert some details to my beams. So again I, I go to insert tab. I select this time to insert structural connections and now I have uh, uh, let's say this connection detail, I will add it here. And now I have few rules how to insert elements. 
So for this detail I will select to insert at the end and start faces of the beam and yeah I will just click on insert and you see I have inserted 124 elements uh, let me see I'll switch maybe to the shaded mode and you can see now that these details are inserted uh, at the end point of all of the beams of course you will maybe uh, use different uh, sizes of elements to different beams but I just want to uh, show you the principle how does it work okay so I have uh, connections uh, for the beams now I will insert connections to the columns so I will select again filter columns this time and let's say now I will insert other elements again structural column connections uh, category and I have uh, this kind of connection so it's for uh, column shoes I will add it here and I will select it to insert it to the bottom of my column so I'll click on insert to model um, you can see them added here but I will also now um, choose to insert balls to the top face of my column okay and again 68 elements inserted uh, okay well maybe I need to connect beams with my column so I will insert additional detail but now I will choose the rule to place the connection on the side face of the column but on the face where the beams are connected to the column so it finds the intersection with the beams and inserts these details in this place <coughs> So again I have uh, more than 100 elements inserted and now I can see that uh, these details are inserted in the intersection points with beams. These are on the top of the columns and these are at the bottom of the columns. And important thing here is that you see this column is uh, 400 by 400 and this column is 600 by 400 but column shoes are inserted to the corners of the column here and to the columns of the column here. So uh, the reason is that after I click on insert command, uh, the, our solution reads uh, parameters from the host family from the column. Uh, it reads, let's say, B and H values from the column and writes these values to my family. So it's 600 and 400. This is the distance between the balls in my family. So when I create the family, I just give uh, the name for this parameter to be the same name as the column parameter. And I group it under the model properties. So if I will do this, my uh, insert elements uh, software will read parameters from the column and write to the uh, connection family and with one click you can insert <coughs> details to different sizes of elements let's say if I have uh, two different sizes of these structural framing double TD slabs and if I will insert the elements again with yeah, I have this kind of a detail here and I will insert them uh, according let's say to the fixed maximum distance okay I will maybe choose some different uh, options here okay Uh, 
section, I will insert fill details. No, something didn't work. I... Hmm. Oh, I forgot to uh, switch this, switch off this option. Okay, so that's why I didn't have the result. Uh, first of all, sorry about that, but uh, now you see the result. So I have one width of the beam and now I have different width of the beam, okay? So, but uh, these details anyway are inserted to the edges because, as I said, in the family I have defined this parameter which is equal to the uh, width of my structural frame. Okay. Uh -huh. So, other ways how to use insert elements is like you can use it in, in very, very different ways. Like, if I will select these beams and I will insert elements, let's say here, and I will select different connection, you know, uh, like a vertical hole just uh, at the ends of my beam. So, uh, these elements. I inserted here. Now you have uh, holes in the ends. And if I will select to insert, let's say, uh, uh, holes, I can search for the uh, connected framing elements here. Let's say I select the type of my Holocaust labs. And if I will click on insert, okay, now you see I have inserted these holes and the ends at the beginning, and now I have these uh, holes for anchoring at the points of uh, my, my uh, anchoring points. Yeah, so <clears throat> these also families are adaptive according to the height of the. Uh, of the beam because if I had uh, the same again command here and I will use to insert the same uh, vertical holes the height of these holes are also uh, taken from the host element from the beam uh, so they are always cut through the full height of my beam uh, and the same with the horizontal uh, hole uh, I can also use let's say for for these kind of framing elements here I will use uh, such family and I will distribute them the maximum distance like say, let's say 2000 here 2000 here and this time there is no other family selected here so it should be okay yeah and now i have like cuts on the edges of my uh, holocaust labs for anchoring again you know uh so uh okay for columns one more thing let's do it like this select columns I will select again structural connection uh, these families you can create easily by yourself it's really not so difficult just um, you have to think where it should be and so on so let's say I will insert this anchor bolt at the connection uh, with the beams and uh, the height of the anchor is taken according to the distance of a corbel so now you see I have these anchor balls here and here and, and so on so you can uh, easily insert at least uh, most of the elements uh, according to the rules you don't need to you know uh, place on the face then move them right back and so on switch between views and uh, do it manually um, okay so insert elements do do this uh, good things for structural engineers but um, it uh, doesn't work with walls you know and if you work with precast walls with 
sandwich rules, so, so on. You, you can't use insert elements. There are no rules for this. It, it doesn't work with the walls. That's why we have developed new solution, uh, smart details. So for this, I will switch to next uh, project and uh, smart details. Next, our solution to insert elements. Okay, I will find it here. And again, on the dock, you will see a few sections for configurations for the uh, create these details to insert them, update, modify them, and so on. Uh, to delete them, delete selected, and insert gravity points and other functionalities you can find here. But uh, smart details works like this you have one main element and you insert details to it, so you can. Uh, get something like this. So you insert uh, different families like uh, cuts or details or line based or point based elements. So I will quickly run through this. I will open configuration window. So you prepare configurations to insert details, how to insert and where to insert. Uh, <coughs> categories which may be used with smart details are walls, parts, structural framing elements, and lines, line-based generic model elements. And uh, you can insert line-based elements, so it's uh, just a generic family of uh, Revit, uh, line-based, and face-based elements, so it's uh, point-based elements insertion rules. And categories which can be used for the details is a generic model, structural connections, and structural framing elements. So here it works like this. Uh, you see these pictures. Uh, so three top uh, for line-based elements and then point-based elements. So on the side for surfaces you can define, uh, let's say, what kind of element, what kind of family you want to use. Then you just check the mark to insert, insert this detail. You have four tabs here to insert four different line-based elements on, on the surfaces. And you choose on the face which one you want to insert elements. Then again, you have some start end of sets. You have a picture here to explain. This is the face of the, of the wall or structural framing or whatever and you choose the layout direction, layout rule, and uh, in one direction and the other direction. And here you can set up also to search uh, for, for the uh, solid of the wall available uh, and so on. So I will demonstrate this. Um, okay, so you set up configurations. You can set up as many details as you want. You see these green lights means that uh, there are some details inserted here, defined. Okay, so I have here some configurations prepared and now I will switch, let's say, to level 1 and I will use this on my walls. So my walls are just a simple regular uh, Revit walls with uh, three layers of different materials. Uh, materials must be with physical properties if we want to have gravity points if we want to insert gravity point you know you, you have to have density of all your elements so it applies to, to your wall or to your details so they have to have density okay all the materials are assigned just a simple three layers walls and I have disjoint the ends of these walls and um, on the corners I have situation like this because I use uh, just a um, system of connections uh, like this so I will show you why is it selected some in this way so let's say I will select two walls and I will uh, I have configurations already so I will use command to insert details and I just pick the configuration I want to use and yeah I'll click on insert 
So now the tool inserts all the cuts and all my of my details into these elements. So maybe okay. I will show you what happened in in the plan view. I have here vertical cut inserted. I have uh, tubes at the bottom inserted. I have these connection loops inserted here. So you see, it's, it it was inserted uh, on the this on this face uh, according to the cut made and. Uh, if I will switch to the section view, you will see that I have also inserted here fillet. I have inserted here a horizontal cut for uh, slab support. Um, yeah, and I have some additional architectural like cuts uh, on the on the face of the uh, precast fall. So it's just uh, uh, to see. The possibilities. Okay, I will. Uh, okay, I will go also to the transparent version. And you see now that I have these tubes defined by the rule of a maximum distance, and I don't have uh, a tube here because in this. If I will click modify here, uh, I have here a possibility to search vertical faces and to search the minimal solid depth so if i have a window I, my detail will not be inserted so you can use smart details and of course you can use some additional details which you can insert manually uh, the same workflow which manual could be applied also okay and now I would like to finish maybe this part, so I will uh, do the same so we can clear uh, see the picture of... I apply the same configuration for this panel also, even if this panel is uh, shorter than this one, because we can use different rules, you know, and... and it may be used for different sizes of the panels. And details also may be prepared in, in such a way, like in certain elements, we can take uh, parameters from host elements. Okay, I select this one and uh, this configuration. So now different cut on this side will be made and some additional reveals. This reveal was added and I have, um, let's say here, I have such kind of a void uh, cut on the corner and I will do the same here, but I will use again different uh, configuration. So I have, let's say this configuration and again, I can prepare uh, what kind of details I want to insert on which surface, like I have inserted here on this surface, on the side surface connection loops and so on. So I have this pretty uh, good uh, picture and modeling here. Okay, so I can just do the same with all my elements. Of course, I can use different configurations, different details and so on. If I will select, let's say, this one, I can use uh, different configuration, let's say a massive wall, plates. So I can use plates, you know, different connection details for the bottom and different, um, okay, transparent. And for the top here, so I can just do the same with other panels. Okay, so um, 
yeah, so that's how we model elements. That's how we insert elements in Revit with our add-ons, with insert elements and smart details. Now I will switch to the next solution. So we have solution for the walls, uh, sorry, for the floors. So you see some floors already modeled it here. If I will go maybe to the 3D view, you see I have uh, floors uh, modeled in a few of the floor levels. But uh, so I will show you how to do this on the I will switch to the fifth floor, fifth level, and we have solution which is called smart floors. So again we have here uh, different commands, but I will show uh, some of them. How does it work? You know, I will just click on insert update floors, and now I have this dialog where I need to enter the group name. I have to uh, select supports for my floors. Uh, the reason for this is like to have possibility to update these elements and to follow the changes in your project so they might uh, update according to the uh, if I will move the beam or uh, any other boundary of my floors. So I select the boundaries uh, beams and, and wall and I enter here offset value to, to make it on top of a beam. I enter here the width of my panels uh, and I, I assign uh, parameters to be written to these and they may be used in, in schedules. So for the precast floor type I will use just a regular Revit floor not framing elements as we do sometimes for modeling of uh, Holocaust Labs but we use these uh, floor elements and we insert uh, holes into, into the floor elements. So we select the sizes of these. We have uh, some uh, holes configurations most commonly used. And now we have uh, layout length, which is taken according to the boundary elements. And we have like 20 panels uh, by 1200 millimeters width. So we have uh, this length, but we're still missing uh, 500 millimeters. So we can just insert, cast in place, just a massive uh, slab for this mm -hmm. option. Uh, and we choose the level of the height offset and we click on insert. Okay, and you will see that we have now floors uh, on the fifth level. And if, if I will go to the section view, you see now that uh, this is the 500 millimeter width uh, floor, massive floor. And now here we have uh, all of course labs and uh, holes inserted here. And all of his labs have now uh, been modeled and they are uh, smart so they are uh, possible to update anytime or modify them, uh, split them, insert additional holes if we need to do this for, for some kind of uh, massive slab. And maybe once more I will do the same. I will give a different name, but, oh, sorry. Okay, I will give a name. Uh -huh. And I will choose this time, uh, uh, beam with the angle. I will layout, choose layout beginning uh, as a beam and layout end as a grid line. And I will enter here offsets again. I will choose the same size of my slabs and the same size of my holes and I will click on insert. Now I have 
these slabs but uh, as I said they are smart and if I will select them again and I will click again on insert update force I will have the same configuration window for this uh, for my uh, slabs and I can let's say uh, change the layout beginning boundary and I will click on update and I will have these floors uh, let's say between these two grid lines <coughs> so I can use uh, also reference planes and grid lines and beams and uh, and walls as a uh, boundaries for my floor elements and yeah it should work like this so uh, now my uh, as I have modeled it, uh, a lot of elements in my project and I want to write different mark numbers to them you know you can do this just manually by clicking column and, and going here or you can prepare some schedule uh, tables uh, for structural column let's say make some filtering of them and um, and then make mark markings adding marks but uh, we have better solution for this we have solution uh, which is called uh, sort mark so here it is if I will select this you see here some options like to renumber grids uh, renumber elements or other things which are in the project so for this reason I will now I will select element element numbering and yeah now I can select from the categories which are available in this project you know so let's say I have created these new floors and I want to add numbers to them so I will select floors and I will click OK and I will write values to the mark parameter or I can just create new shared parameter over here and now uh, again I have a lot of uh, possible uh, rules to apply here I can select from a lot of parameters and select how to group elements how to number them how to sort them according to which parameters you know and I, I can save this configuration I, and I can use it in my future project so and for the, on the sort mark tab I can select what information should be written to the mark value you know uh, let's say I want to uh, write the number of my level so first of all I will add HCS uh, prefix then I will write this value number from the level name and I will have a suffix and then I can insert sort mark uh, number which is according to my sorting rules so I save this configuration and I click OK and all of my elements are renumbered now uh, some of the elements have of course uh, the same mark values because we have the same parameters uh, which I have defined and if I will go to this uh, let's say slab plan and I can just uh, let's insert some tag numbers uh, to be selected let's choose the mark and vertical and okay so you see now I have all these elements automatically renumbered if I will go to the let's say to this uh, view you can see question marks here these are for the for my beams so my beams are also we don't have the mark value currently but uh, if I will choose element numbering again with sort mark and I will go to the uh, structural framing category and I will write it to the mark, mark values again I will I have configuration already prepared 
the different uh, options and I'll click OK and all of my elements are have marked values now. So you can see now that all of these elements have uh, different marks according to the of course the sizes, the length, the width, the volume parameters. Uh, it depends on the parameters I select any available from the instance or type parameters. Um, okay, so I would like to do the same with the columns because I will need them to show you how smart assemblies work. So I will do this once again with uh, structural columns. I will write values to mark again configuration for columns and I click OK. So all of my columns has been uh, remarked. They have now different mark values. Okay, so this is very good solution, you know, uh, to keep the standards of the company and quickly remember elements. Um, okay, so the next solution after we make the modeling, we make the mark values, uh, we need to prepare some drawings. So for this I will use solution smart assemblies. And okay, here are two sections in smart assemblies to create, update, uh, edit configurations and so on. And of course this is done according to configurations as in most of uh, our solutions. So I will open configurate. Oh, sorry, this is the location of configuration files. So it's uh, actually it means that uh, configurations are saved to your computer. They are not uh, dependent on the project. So you can use the same configurations in, in next projects and so on. So, okay, I will open configuration window. And here in configuration window, you can see now uh, assembly views tab. Uh, so here you can create as many views as you want for the element to create. Then you create the, uh, the view type. So it's, will it be the section? Will it be uh, the elevation views? or it will be the legend um, and you see some additional views like in standard Revit you have only the section to one direction but we have some additional views so they are flipped already and it solves some issues which you might have while using standard Revit and of course you'll uh, from the beginning you can choose the direction of your view okay so uh, you can give any name to this view. Um, I just leave the standard name but you can write anything in your language or uh, just give uh, any view name. Uh, and we can assign view template, any of the view templates we have in our project for each of the view so it will be done automatically. You don't need to you know go and do this manually and then the last option is dimension rules. So dimension rules are set up over here. Uh, if I will open it, you will see that we have uh, again dim dimension rules, different dimension rules here, and these are uh, for placing automatic dimension to your elements. So on the first tab, you can see the uh, rules for the main element geometry. We have here. Uh, dimension types uh, we can select we can select the uh, which uh, holes should be dimensioned or they should not be dimensioned uh, how lines uh, should be joined or disjoint or the uh, separate uh, dimension lines should be created so we uh, make our adjustments here you can see also these pictures and follow what are you doing and here I uh, um, set up to to split dimension lines or have this uh, quotation formula here and then we can 
we have these configurations of dimensions for hosted metal details, for hosted uh, concrete details, for the rebars, for the uh, at the end we have a uh, possibility to switch off or switch on the nodes which will be created and what kind of information should be provided to the node. Um, yeah, and again, a possibility to place the uh, nodes on each side or to just connect uh, detail lines and so on. So we can prepare different configurations and use them here. And you can tag elements in views, you can show uh, gravity point in views. Uh, so I just chose to, to, to show it uh, only on front view and to show or not to show the place of the views of a section. And we have here some special options below to insert gravity point or not to insert to orient the uh, element to the family editor front view and for the walls there is a special button because you may have uh, reversed sections uh, while using uh, standard rivet cuts so this may solve some options and the next step is schedules so you can select again schedules you can select what templates could be applied for schedule so you don't need to do this manually and uh, select if this will be for the assembly instance or assembly type uh, the, the amount uh, uh, schedule values and the sheets here you can sh use the sheet as a template but first of all you have to uh, create at least one uh, assembly drawing so for this now okay let's go to the uh, action so I will select one of the columns and I will create assemblies and column formwork uh, configuration and I'll click on cre create okay so views are created dimensions are placed and schedules created also uh, okay now I have this column I have uh, views with automatic dimensions with uh, nodes um, with total dimensions and so on so I can go on I see that the gravity point is presented in the uh, front view as I was selected and I have the place of my section views also visible in this view but not in, in any other other views okay so I will let's say drag some views uh, to my sheet okay maybe not this one but the left view you see the blue line appears for the uh, alignment of the views okay column schedule and hosted details schedule so I place all the views here and now if I will change the configurations and on the sheet tab as I said after I create one of the sheet after I, I place the views I can use this sheet as a template for other columns let's say I have this column and I can uh, now create assembly and let's use the same configurations but now all the views uh, will be placed on the sheet as I did here manually now it will be done automatically so let's wait a few seconds and uh, let's go to the sheet now and you see now the new column created, the sheets are placed and we have of course dimensions to this uh, new hosted detail and so on. So the views are in the same place, uh, the schedule tables are placed, you can have also legends here uh, and so on. So this uh, helps us a lot to make 
our drawing so you can use it for different elements like if I will select the beam and I will select the um, configuration for the beam okay so you may have different views you may have different amount of views different amount of schedules different amount of uh, sheets for each of the elements and yeah now we can just run through we can uh, see the results okay so all the dimensions are placed um, maybe one more let's say we create assembly for this element uh, but uh, I would like to notice also one thing which is also saves us time so I select only one element I don't, don't select all the details uh, smart assemblies does this automatically it in includes all the hosted elements and uh, these details are automatically included into my assembly so I don't need this to do this manually Okay, I can just overview, I can place uh, these uh, views to my sheet and use uh, sheet as a template. Okay, let's do this with another beam, just to show you how different elements could be created. And let's see where is it. It's, uh, okay, now I have this element. You know, with uh, dimensions for holes, with dimensions for the horizontal holes, and what's next? Okay, so smart assemblies with columns, walls and other elements and in the other project maybe I will show you the results uh, with, okay, with the wall I can just <coughs> select the wall and create assemblies and again I select one element and all of other elements are automatically included into my workshop drawings at least at formal drawings uh, for this element because I don't have reinforcement elements here but uh, you can see now the wall views maybe I can just drag these over here Schedule tables too. Okay, and I have all the schedules prepared automatically. I have the element mass and so on. Um, yeah, with all the details uh, dimensioned in different views, I can select where I want to see them. Uh, and the sandwich, okay, I have already the sandwich panel created here before oh I missed uh, the sheet boundaries as I see as I placed these views okay anyway um, you can use these for for this kind of the details also uh, to get at least uh, at least a major part of your work Okay, so yeah, I think that's it and um, all I wanted to say today, uh, and uh, yeah, I will switch on now questions 
and I will answer them if you have any of questions. Um, if this webinar is recorded, yes, it is recorded and it will be placed on the web and uh, yeah, we can show you a record and we can send you the link. Länken till äh, webbinariet kommer finnas även på vår hemsida. Och att du kommer att gå ut i ett äh, mejl till er som har deltagit också. I will... I think that the link will send out in a mail from us. Mm -hmm. Till webbinar. Mm -hmm. And, allt ni har sett här nu på betongelementen går vi även att applicera på en trävägelstomme. Oh, I see the question about reinforcement. So, uh, uh, to insert reinforcement, uh, you have to do it manually with your just uh, Revit commands or Revit extension maybe. Um, but uh, in workshop drawings, you can use uh, configurations to dimension your reinforcement. Uh, sorry, I don't uh, have this example, but uh, actually in the configurations of smart assemblies, you can define all of these uh, uh, to, to show only reinforcement and to dimension reinforcement. Uh, but uh, reinforcement you have to create on your own. We don't have tools for that. Okay, if there's no more questions, we will thank you all for the attending the webinar and thank you Vanessa so much for showing us the Okay, so uh, thank you for joining me <laughs> and yeah, try the try this uh, tools, you can uh, download the tools for BIMDOC and you can have trial of 14 days of any of our tools, so uh, please, uh, please do this and, and if you have any questions you can always uh, write to support of uh, AJ Cat and we will answer any questions you have. So that's it, I think. Right? There are no questions. Yeah. And we'll end. Well, thank you. Thank okay, you. thanks. Bye bye.